Wouldn't it have been easier just to make it rain? Welcome to The Whole Truth, everybody, where I'm taking you through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation, and we're not skipping anything because God's Word has the answers for our lives, but we've got to be in it. That's why I'm on this mission. So if that sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, do all those social media things. But most importantly this morning, grab a Bible, turn it open to Exodus chapter 17. It's a familiar story, but I want to dig into the meaning of it where God has Moses strike a rock and bring water out of a rock. Let's start out with how we get there. It's Exodus 17, verse 1. Then all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on their journey from the wilderness of sin, according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people contended with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. Okay, so we, we know sin. That's not a, a like unrighteousness or immorality. It's a place. They were at this place called sin, and they get up and they leave from sin. That's where God had delivered to them or given them at first manna. Now, manna is going to follow with them. Wherever they go in the wilderness, they're going to continue to get manna. They leave the wilderness of sin, and they come to Rephidim, and it's under the commandment of the Lord. I'm not going to spend a lot of time there because we've talked about this quite a bit, but notice that God commanded them, and yet then there's this problem of no water. Just because you're inside of the will of the Lord does not make your life free from problems. It never will. And so here they are under the commandment of the Lord. They left sin. They come to Rephidim. There's no water. They've been here before. It doesn't say this time that they've gone three days without water, but I guarantee you if you've gone three days without water in the desert, you don't want to go through that again. So the people start to contend with Moses. Now there's a, a little bit of a problem there. Their, their problem is real. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with going to the Lord to seek an answer or to ask for help, but they didn't go to the Lord and ask for help. It says they contended with Moses. You can imagine that they're probably saying, why did we leave sin? There was water in sin. Why, did we leave? why didn't we just stay there? They're contending with him. Well, look what Moses does. Moses, this is now picking up in, in um, the middle of verse 2. They said to Moses, give us water that we may drink. And so Moses said to them, why do you contend with me? Why do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, why is it that you brought us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord saying, what shall I do with this people? They are almost all ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Go on before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel. Also take in your hand your rod with which you struck the river and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock of Horeb, and you shall strike the rock and water will come out of it and the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders. And so he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the contention of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Now see, you get a little bit more there at the end. When they're contending with Moses, what they're saying to Moses is, I thought the Lord was with us. Moses actually names the place, uh, uh, he actually names the place uh, Meribah and Massa. Now remember the one place was, uh, was Mara, that was bitter. Well now it's contention. All right, they contended with him. And what is it that they were contending? Is the Lord with us or not? I thought you said the Lord was with us, Moses. That's what they're saying to Moses. Well, Moses went to the Lord. He said, why do you tempt the Lord? And so he goes to the Lord and he says, Lord, I don't know what to do with these people, but they're about ready to stone me because there's no water. We've stopped here in Rephidim and there's no water. What do we do? And God says to Moses, go get your staff, the same one that you use to part the Red Sea. Go get your staff. And I love this part where the Lord says, he says, take your rod in your hand and behold you'll, the one you struck the river, behold the rock of Horeb, and you shall strike the rock with water and, and, water, uh, and water will come out of it and the people may drink. The Lord says, take your rod and go strike the rock and I'm going to make water come out of the rock. And by the way, the Lord said before that, the Lord said, I will go before you, right? I mean, the Lord's telling Moses, I am with you. Yes, I am with you, and I will go before you to these people. In other words, I'm going to show you and all of these people that, yes, I am very present here. Now, again, 
I would have just made it rain. Right? If it was me, it seems like you're in the desert. Yes, an easy solution to that would be just make it rain. But rain is a very natural thing. And so if it had rained, you could see where there would be question, is this the work of the Lord or not? So God tells Moses, take your rod and strike the rock, and water's going to come from the rock. And I think there's an even deeper uh, meaning there. Well, not, I don't just think there's a deeper meaning there. I know that there's a deeper meaning there. You see, Moses is doing something in the Old Testament. It's a real event. He took his rod and he struck the rock there at Horeb, and water came out of the rock. And that is exactly the same as in the New Testament as Jesus, who is the rock of our salvation, was bruised and he was struck and he produced for us living water. Right? Jesus is the cornerstone of our salvation. He is the rock of our salvation. He said of himself, upon this rock I will build my church. Jesus is the rock. To some, he's a, he's a rock of offense and a rock of stumbling. But to others, he's the chief cornerstone. To those of us who believe, he's the chief cornerstone. Jesus is the rock. And he produces living water for us. Why did God have water come from a rock in the Old Testament? Because it pictures for us what Jesus would do in the New Testament as he is the rock of our salvation providing living water. Even better than that, I love the fact that he was struck with the rod of Moses. How did Jesus provide us with this living water? He died for us. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. He was struck for us. And more than just being beaten, Jesus was hung on a cross and he died for us. He took on our punishment. Which I believe is also why it was Moses that struck the rock and not the people. Think about it. To make the picture what we kind of always hear, which is the truth, that, that Jesus died for our sins, which he did. He took my sins, he took your sins, he took the sin of the whole world on himself when he died on the cross. So wouldn't the picture have made sense? If all of the people had come up, if God had said, tell the people to come up and strike the rock, each one, have them come up and strike the rock and spit on the rock and punch the rock and kick the rock and beat the rock and water will come out of the rock. But he didn't. God said, Moses, you do it. Moses, you take your rod and you strike the rock. I believe that's purposeful as well because not only did Jesus die for us on the cross, but he also took on the curse of the law. Now, that's not me. If that makes you upset when I say that the curse of the law, because that's God's word. God's word says in Galatians, he calls the law a curse. He says that it's the curse of the law. You see, the law wasn't designed to save anybody. The law points out to us that we are sinners. It is the curse of the law. But Jesus took that and he fulfilled it. He fulfilled the entire law. Where the law points out to us that we are sinners, it also points us to Jesus who is the fulfillment. And so God had Moses, only Moses with his rod. Moses who gave the law took his rod and struck the rock. And it was the law of Moses that was laid on Jesus for him to fulfill. And he did and produced for us living water. Now, just in case you think that this is Pastor Justin just like trying to come up with his own scene, his own scenario, take that Bible of yours and look into the New Testament and look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Now, if you need to pause the video, that's okay. Just pause it and then go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And there in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, look at verse 4. 1 Corinthians 10 and 4, and you could read the whole chapter there if you want. I'd encourage that, but I don't have time for that. Just one little verse, 1 Corinthians 10 and 4, and, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Friends, you and I who believe in Jesus, we drink of the living water of the Savior, the Savior who is the rock. He produced the living water. And when we drink of him, 
will never thirst again. He gives us eternal life. Would you put your faith in the rock of salvation, who is Christ Jesus? He is the only way to be saved. He is the rock. He is the living water. He is the one who was struck for you. Hope you enjoyed today's video, and I will see you tomorrow with more of Exodus chapter 17. You won't want to miss it.